it, you know, as the second half's drawing on, the fatigue starts to build, doesn't oh, it? Well, and then you, you oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, I'm sure everyone was, not it? but but it's easy to it's easier in those circumstances when you're carrying the ball, isn't it? Than yeah. uh, than than if you're trying to react to stuff. So you can kind of understand why why they were getting that roll on, and you can understand why perhaps the goal line defence wasn't what it could have been both ways, really. Yeah, oh, but, uh, yeah, but maybe so. I can more understand the yardage not being yeah. what it was and sort of save your energy for the goal line, uh, to, to be honest. But, um, look, Wigan just had enough in the tank, like, just had enough in the tank. Before just, I talk yeah. about the highlight moment then, I'll talk about the penalties because there were a lot of penalties and... Uh, my Uncle Liam made, like, the most telling observation, which was basically... Failure was making no allowance for fatigue. So right. It was, you know, very. Well- I, I was going to ask if it was a if it was a if it was basically a, an issue of fatigue and and you know not laziness. It's just um, just lack of lack of ability to to clear the rock or whatever. There was one particular penalty that was missed where George Williams got a swinging arm to the face from a sort of second or third man in over the top, which uh, I don't understand how the touch judge didn't see. But most of the penalties were. Most of them were offside calls. Right. Um, Salford were offside from kicks, from from their own kicks, uh, two or three times, and just couldn't um, stop, couldn't be patient. And one of them was also they knocked the ball loose from Joe Burgess near his own, near our own line um, by tackling him in the air. They just got to him a fraction too early, just a bit too right. impetuous, just a bit too impatient. And Salford's biggest strength, which was their line speed and um, determination and commitment into collisions both ways let them down a little bit as well with the kick chase unfortunately um, there was a, a couple of lazy high shots both ways a couple of hands in around the rook that looked quite soft probably didn't need to be penalised uh, both ways um, but a lot of them were offside calls particularly um, like I said Salford chasing kicks Wigan not being square or uh, or being short of the 10 um, so it, it, it felt about right if you were refereeing the game that way. And, and that's how he refereed it. He didn't allow for the fatigue at all. So it was an even penalty count. And anyone who thinks that it, it wasn't is being blinded by their own bias, um, to be honest. I think it was pretty even-handed. I would have liked to see less whistle, but whether the players could have kept up with less whistle. I was just going to say that that, that might, have, uh, it might have saved a couple of, yeah. <laughs> a couple of people's bacon with a, uh, getting a breather or two. Yeah, but that was the, well, yeah, a few errors from Salford as well helped to get breathers. But, um, yeah, I, the atmosphere was pretty good. Um, apart from when I was wa- walking out the ground and two Salford fans sort of bustled out and uh, started... They were basically saying, oh, try and take the piss now. And I don't even remember what taking the piss we did other than, you know, George Williams out jumping their full back to get the ball <laughs> for us to score a winning try. But I'd, I'd, I'm not sure. But um, they were def- they were looking for a fight. But because me and my Uncle Liam didn't react to them, they then just turned around and said some said the same things to the next lot of Wigan fans, the next lot of Wigan fans, the next lot of Wigan fans. I would hope if, if that happened outside our ground, the Wigan fans that were around them would kind of be a bit more protective to the opposition fans that were absolutely doing nothing wrong other than walking out of the stadium, maybe with smiles on their faces, but we won. No, you know, we weren't saying out, we weren't goading, we weren't even looking at them, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, that was a bit nasty, uh, but that's a very small minority of, of Salford fans, and I love the Salford fans in general. Uh, the highlight moment, um, yes. we, we got a little bit sidetracked, but I'm going to talk about it now, and then we'll move on. Uh, and how can it not be that match winner from Hardacre, really? Williams... So Williams got the ball and he kicked it high and short to try and cause a bit of chaos, really. Um, but because of that, he was kind of the only person who could chase his own kick because everyone else, if they'd have chased it, would probably have been offside other than maybe the two outside of him. Um, but, uh, yeah, he leaps to beat Evels to his own kick, very much like we talked about Coop beating, beating Hardacre. It was very much the same thing. The, the, the kick had bounced and then Evels went up for the, yeah. the bounced kick and Williams jumps basically with more more intent than him and, and took the, yeah. grabbed the ball out of his hands it was in 
Evels' hands and he pulls it out of his hands. Uh, and then he, he quickly gets the ball wide to the right and then through Hankinson's quick hands, very good play by Hankinson. This is where having a centre in that position at that time of the game absolutely benefited. And I'm not sure if we had uh, Willie Isa there, for example, the same thing would have happened. But very quick hands, very good play to tip it on to Hardacre, who was composed to uh, fend off one man, then dummy uh, in the space he had, to take his chance uh, and run in by the sticks and make it an easy conversion too. Um, and uh, absolutely fantastic moment and... You know, enjoyed by all the Wigan fans. The the best away atmosphere I've been a part of this season, and that goes for when you know Joe Greenwood scored the first try when we were still trailing as well. Um, in, in the comeback period, it, it was it was it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, but obviously letting, letting the ball bounce, it's cardinal sin, isn't it? You know, and, and you say that's probably a, it's probably a function of fatigue. But but yeah, if you, you know, if you if you can close that down, then then maybe, maybe the uh, maybe they come out of the uh, Easter weekend with four points, which would be most unexpected. But would have been fantastic go. for them. It would have had them around the top, uh, chasing the top five spots again. And mm. but to be honest, it was a, it, it, the kick was. I don't know if I'm crediting if I'm giving too much credit. <laughs> or not but the kick seemed deliberately intent on causing chaos and it it was left by the Salford players but also all the Wigan players that could have been offside left well alone yeah as well which is what I mean I, couldn't I, I, do I think you're right in that it was it was its position was unusual in the sense that coaching might tell them at that point to let let the opposition catch it and then make the tackle rather than trying to trying to challenge for a ball that's about 30 or 40 metres out or whatever it was. So, yeah, but yeah, I, I guess it's it's just one of those things. It's, it, it, was, it was a good try. It was a good try. Yeah. Okay, moving on to um, uh, another healthy win for the league leaders. Yep, so this one finished St. Helens 62, Hull FC 16. Um, it was 30 points to 10 um, at half time. Uh, good crowd, 11,268 um, uh, for the totally wicked, and Robert Hicks was the man in charge. Um, yeah, as you would expect, the stats emphasise the home side's dominance in this game. They made 730 more metres than Hull, which is more than twice as many as the visitors made. Um, made them at 2.4 metres per carry, better average gain, and 11 clean breaks. Made fewer errors and stop it off. They they had a nearly 10% better team tackle success. Hull FC made only 700 metres and had an 82% tackle success rate. That's a that's a um, after the Lord Mayor show type type performance. If I ever saw one, yeah. Um, Kevin Naguama with four like tries for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I feel sorry for any uh, FC fans who made the trip. Uh, Kevin Naguama, four tries, a try assist, seven tackle busts, 149 metres, three clean breaks. Um, Adam Swift, cartoon dog himself, three tries, eight tackle busts, 167 metres and four clean breaks. Matty Lees, uh, 129 metres and Lachlan Coote backing up Good Friday with a try. Two try assists, nine tackle busts and 109 metres. And... For the losing Hull FC side, nothing, not a thing, didn't do anything worthy of mention. So we won't. <laughs> Paige was the first to get in touch. She said, well, didn't expect to win, but didn't expect to be beaten by that score. Just shows how far off the pace we are with the likes of Saints and Warrington. Some of the fringe players just not cutting it. But we'll still take two points over Easter period. Better than non-A, Tom. Laffy face. <laughs> And Tom says, cup final hangover, it seems. Remember, Paige, you're only as good as your last game. So we're both shite again. <laughs> oh, do you know what I think has happened here? I think I've merged Sarah's two reviews for the games into one, but got, but that's not what they're meant to be because they were for different games. Oh, bollocks. Anyway, Rich Langley, we'll get to that. Rich Langley said, always in doubt. <laughs> <laughs> A good opening 10 minutes gave a glimmer of hope and then the Saints team got on the pitch. Big game versus Wakey on Sunday. Yeah, they, didn't they lead like 10-0? It was 10-0, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And, and it was... Um, I'm, I, I'm sure they were pinching themselves and as it turned out, they were dreaming and um, maybe Saints had just... Um, yeah, they, they they woke up and, uh, and, and decided to start playing. But yes, they... Uh, uh, they can't. They can't blame their start because they definitely uh, they got uh, they got going. Um, 
So St. David says, an Easter Monday blowout. Hull started quickly with two nice tries, and then we then we lost Tomo. Snake was in the tackle, just saying. <laughs> so having rested Big Al, we had to rely on big minutes from Ashworth Lees and indefatigable Knowles, who were all excellent. Lomax and Coote rang riot, and 11 tries followed in the sun. Coote has even started knocking them over from out wide. Perfect. Time for revenge on the Dragons. Um... I think uh, didn't didn't the only disciplinary ban out of the weekend come on come on a Saints player for a, a dangerous tackle uh, Morgan Knowles so yes. out of the Monday's games so I would say uh, be careful there David when you're casting aspersions elsewhere and your own players are getting done for dirty dirty tackles. Uh, <laughs> Sarah, I'm, I apologise, Sarah. Her review for the uh, Derby game on the Friday was feeling a bit nervy at halftime. For all the possession we had, our lead wasn't good. Thankfully, the second half was better. Smiley face. Yeah, definitely summed that game up um, succinctly. Uh, this game, she blames all on Luke Thompson getting injured because Hull were 10-0 up at that point. Alternatively, I might blame Radford's team selection or the shocking defence or the interesting interpretation of the rules applied by Hicks. Uh, I would... I would lean towards the uh, shocking defence where yeah. we could be 60 points. Yes. <laughs> I've, I've, only, I've only seen the highlights, but quite frankly, you could drive some, uh, you could drive some buses through some of them gaps. Uh, Joshua's granddad says, team selection all wrong, soft bench, but the first 10 minutes and two tries gave us false hope. Then Mr. Hicks rem- 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 remembered his role and the penalties rolled in, giving Saints the momentum they required. Their right hand flank tore us to bits. Two disallowed tries mid second half uh, denied us the little respectability before heads dropped. And then always in our shadow said, who is this cunt? They keep shouting, <laughs> faster, stronger team won at a canter. Yeah, I know you're feeling on that on that second <laughs> part. Um, let's just have a look at what, the, what this bench was then for Hull FC. Fash, Green, Thompson and Lynn. So Green making his first appearance of the season after a bad injury last year. Thompson, who keeps getting played at a prop when he's clearly not. Uh, and yeah. Fash, who is... Wasn't he out on loan? Brad Fash. Have they pulled him back from loan, or was that someone else? And Jez Litton, because um, yeah. they started with, interestingly, they started with, um, I think, Dean Hadley at hooker in this one. No Danny Houghton for for Hull FC. Uh, yeah, so you, you saw the highlights. Yeah. What What did you make of them? Well, what did I make? Let's just have a word for the cartoon dog, shall we? Coming, coming in. Obviously, we, 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 from the first game, we didn't mention Percival. Kind of pulled up with a with a of uh, with an injury, didn't he? So, yeah. um, so obviously, the, the Saints had to reshuffle. Um, but this is this is the thing, isn't it? They're, they've got strength and depth when they reshuffle. They put bring in a player like Adam Swift, and play teams like Hull FC can't do that. Um, and that, and you know, we, we can criticise the bench, but this is the trouble with these second games, and this is why they become they be, sometimes they become blowout scores because teams um, teams can't compete. They can't. Um, well, to be honest, the, 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 you know, the Saints sorry. bench had a more Payru Ashworth Wellsby. You're not talking. That's not their front line. That's that's no, of three not. reserve players there in that. In that bench, and and that's with them already having Bachelor in the starting lineup, um, making some playing at centre, like you mentioned, and so no uh, Warmsley in this one for them. No, and then obviously or the entire the... or the injured Percival um, as well. So you know, and I don't, I think they took Coot off after he'd ran the show as well. Yeah, <laughs> and obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah so. <laughs> It's difficult. It's difficult to look too harshly at, at, at squad uh, squad selections because um, sometimes they work out as as, um, as the next game will show. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's tricky, and particularly if you if your squad is a little bit thin or thirty seven year olds in, in 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 some cases, in a couple of players' cases, it's it, these things are bound to catch up with. And even even on their best day, um, FC are going to struggle against Saints. So. Um, so yeah, the, it, it, the, the fact that this was a blowout actually is, is, is no massive surprise to anybody. I don't think. Yeah, three tries for the cartoon dog, then four tries for the uh, for 
uh, Naguama. So, what was what was the the ultimate best try then? Of them all. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to think which one. Oh, the eleven, yeah. Ten, I think. The well, there's the other. There's the seven between two of them, aren't there? Um, I can't. I, honestly, I've, I've gone blind to which the best try was. Blended into one, didn't they? Most of them. They did. The it, it, 